Stephanie Dobson is back with us this week. Stephanie is a local lawyer and mediator with Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation here in Lloydminster. And Stephanie, we've been spending some time talking about the new Divorce Act, which came into effect mm -hmm. at the beginning of March. And this week we're going to focus on relocation. Uh, that's obviously a big issue if you have spouses that are separating and somebody wants to move to a different place. So the first thing we want to talk about is what does relocation mean in this new Divorce Act? Sure, and I'll just start out by mentioning, reminding our viewers that the Divorce Act that we're talking about is a federal statute, so it's for married parents. There's also provincial um, uh, uh, legislation for unmarried parents, but today we're going to be focusing primarily on that um, federal legislation for married parents. So when we're talking about relocation, uh, there's two different aspects. So it, it all involves a move generally, but one is called a change of residence and the other is called a relocation. So a change of residence is addressed in one section that's very much more broad. It's just a change of where you're going to be living irrespective of the distance. A relocation goes further than that. So it's also a move but it involves um, where there's going to be a significant change or impact to the relationship of a child or children to the left behind parent, spouse, um, or, or step parent. So once it's been determined, Stephanie, that there is in fact going to be a change, what then happens next? So if you're someone who has parenting time, uh, which is a spouse or a parent or step parent um, most often, or decision-making responsibilities, you're required to give anyone else um, who has that same, um, so parenting time, decision-making responsibilities, or even a contact order, someone like a grandparent, you're required to give them notice of your move. So there's a difference if it's going to be change of residence versus a relocation. So with a change of residence, um, you have to give notice ahead of the move of your intention to move. And then it needs to be in writing and there's some certain things that you need to give. And the idea of the change of residence is just to make sure that the other, that whoever else has a relationship or involvement with the children knows where the children are going to be uh, with the other parent. Or um, and so for a relocation, it goes even further than that. So there's notice requirements as far as the timing. So 60 days ahead of when you're planning to do that relocation, which again is that significant uh, move, um, uh, you have to give 60 days uh, notice and there's a particular form you need to use and some particular things you need to say. But of most uh, significance, you have to, the moving, the intending moving parent has to give a proposal to the other parent people involved as far as what your plan is or what your proposal is for parenting scheduling you know the other the left behind parent right. uh, still being able to see the children now what happens if there is an objection by one side or the other when it comes to relocating or moving yeah, these these kind of cases are often um, very high conflict or can become high conflict when the move is significant. So when we're talking about a change of residence, there's not really a formal objection process. It's more so just making sure that everyone knows where each where the children are going to be living. When there's a relocation, that objection um, is something that is, is more formalized. It has to be given within 30 days of having received the notice of the intention to move. So one person gives the notice 60 days ahead, and then the other person gives within 30 days, gives their notice of that objection. If they object, if someone objects, then the move cannot happen unless you come to agreement or there's a court order permitting that move. So if they can't come to an agreement, uh, obviously one person wants to move, that's a big deal, they've made this decision. What then can actually happen? How do they end up trying to get this resolved, Stephanie? Yeah, as you can see, these one, these um, issues can become very, very complicated. So of course, we're just looking for a general overview here. But the idea is that if there is a dispute, that it's likely that the court is going to have to get involved. The thing, uh, the, the, the change in the Divorce Act is that there's actually now a list of factors that the court will consider. So first of all, the court goes to the, uh, what we talked about last week, which is the best interests of the children. And there's a further list that's specifically with respect to relocation. So I'm going to go through that list very briefly here. Sure. Um, and of course, we'll have to rewatch it because it'll just be a really uh, quick uh, overview. So number one is the reasons for the relocation. Number two is the impact of that relocation on the child. Uh, the amount, uh, the level of involvement uh, for each parent with children. 
Um, and the courts will also look at whether uh, those notice requirements were were fulfilled. So the 60 days notice, uh, whether that was provided as um, expected. Um, we'll also look at existence of existence of orders or agreements with respect to the geographic area where the children are supposed to um, are ordered or agreed to be living. Um, and when we talk about that proposal that the intent, the moving parent is to give, um, the courts will look at the reasonableness of that proposal. And they'll also look at compliance with um, existing orders or agreements. So if someone is a constant um, is in constant breach of their existing orders or agreements, the courts will look at that. The last thing is the interesting part is what the courts are not allowed to look at. It's called a double bind question. And what that means is the courts are not allowed to say to a parent, if you are prohibited from moving with the children, would you still move? Okay, Stephanie, there's a lot really to unpack there with uh, yes. all of those different changes. <laughs> if anybody is looking for further information in regards to this or just in regards to mediation in general, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Sure. You can call our office at 780-875-2234 and inquire. We, we do both legal and mediation services, but these kind of relocations are a perfect example of where um, at starting by trying to have that uh, conversation can be really helpful. Um, you can also look up um, us on uh, at our website, hankadivorce.ca, or go to our e-learning community for separated and divorcing families, uh, upanotchlearning.com. All right, Stephanie, well, once again, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll be back thank next you. week. Yes, thanks.